Hey guys, what's up? Today we're looking at finding the line integral of a scalar function. So we got a line integral of a scalar function here, part A, integral over the curve C, x times y to the 4, ds, and C, the curve C, is the right half of the circle x squared plus y squared equals 16. So the first thing we want to note is the formula for a line integral of a scalar function. And that is going to be that the integral over the curve C of f of x, y, z ds is equal to the integral from a to b f of r of t times the magnitude of r prime of t dt. So when do you know to use this formula? Well, that's given by the ds that you see at the end of the integral right there, that little ds. So you just have one function, in this case, part a, x times y to the 4 ds, and that tells you you should be using this formula right here, integral from a to b, f of r of t, times the magnitude of r prime of t, dt. And this f of r of t just means take whatever x is and plug it in for x in terms of t, and take whatever y is in terms of t and plug it in for y. So in this example part a, what we're going to have to do is we're going to need to parameterize the circle ourselves. So r1, we'll call it r1 of t, is a circle of radius 4. So to parameterize a circle of radius 4, we let x equal 4 co cosine of t. So x is going to be 4 cosine of t. And y is going to equal 4 sine of t. And now if we want the right half of the circle, from negative 4 to 4, on the y axis, that's going to be t ranging from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So that is going to be our parameterization for this curve c. So the curve is actually just this semicircle to the right of our um, y axis. Now we've got our parameterization. What we need to do is find r prime of t. So what is r1 prime of t? Well, that just means in vector form, we differentiate x with respect to t. So we get negative 4 sine t. And then differentiate y, we get 4 cosine t. And then we want to take the magnitude of that. So magnitude of r1 prime of t is going to be the square root of 4 sine squared, or sorry, 16 sine squared t plus 16 cosine squared t. So just taking the magnitude of this vector, first component squared plus second component squared. We get 16 sine squared plus 16 cosine squared. Now our trig identity says that's just the square root of 16 times 1, because I can factor out 16 from sine and cosine squared. And that just leaves me with sine squared plus cosine squared. So that's going to be square root of 16, which is 4. So that's going to be what I multiply inside this integral right here. So now my integral over the curve C, x, y to the 4, ds is going to be integral from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. And then x, we know, is um, 4 cosine of t, so we plug in 4 cosine of t. And y is 4 sine t, so 4 sine t to the 4. So 4 sine of t raised to the fourth power. And then magnitude of r prime is 4 dt. 
So I've got a heck of an integral here. We got uh, 4 to the 4, and then another 4, and another 4. So that's 4 to the 6. We'll pull that out front. So that's 4 to the 6, integral negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, sine to the 4t times cosine t dt. So how are we going to attack this integral? We got 4 to the 6, integral from negative power over 2 to power over 2, sine of 4t, cosine of t dt. It looks like we're going to do a u substitution, u equals sine of t, so let's carry that u substitution out. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a u sub, u equals sine of t, and then du is going to be cosine of t dt. All right, so that's going to tell us, let's see, if u equals sine of t, then t equals negative pi over 2 gives us u equals negative 1. And t equals pi over 2 gives us u equals positive 1. So this is going to change our integral into 4 to the 6th power, integral from negative 1 to 1, and u to the 4, and then cosine of t dt, that's just du. So this is going to equal 4 to the 6th power times u to the 5th over 5 from negative 1 to 1. And that's just going to be, it's going to be 4 to the 6th times 1 over 5 minus negative 1 over 5. So it ends up being 4 to the 6th times 2 over 5. And if we actually multiply that out, we get 81, 92 over 5. All right, so that takes care of the first problem there. The second problem is another scalar line integral. But uh, we have three dimensions in this case, so we have x, y, and z in terms of t for our curve c. So I don't know what's going to happen for this curve c, or what it's going to look like necessarily, but the formula is still the same. So the formula is still going to be the same. So what we need to do is just go ahead and take r prime of t. So r prime of t is going to equal, if we just write it in a vector form, differentiate x with respect to t, we get 1. Differentiate y with respect to t, we get 2t. Differentiate z with respect to t, we get 3t squared. And then take the magnitude of r prime, so magnitude of r prime is going to equal the square root of square each component. So 1 plus 4t squared plus 9t to the 4. Uh, that does not look pretty. We'll see what happens though. So we're going to have the integral over the curve C, 2x plus 9z ds is going to be integral from 0 to 1, and then 2x, well that's 2 times t, plus 9z, but z is t cubed, so t cubed. And then that is going to be multiplied by this radical, 1 plus 4t squared plus 9t to the 4 dt. Oh wow, so this does not look good for us. All right, so this radical actually is not going to be too bad. What we can do is do a u sub. That's always our first tactic when we look at integrals is try a u sub. And the natural thing to let u be would be the inside of this radical. So let's try that just to see what happens. So we try this, u equals 1 plus 4t squared plus 9t to the 4. And then differentiate, we get du equals um, 8t plus 36t cubed dt. And actually what we can do right there is factor out of 4, so that's 4 times 2t plus 9t cubed dt. Aha, uh -huh, wow, so actually 
um, du is 4 times what we actually have, so we need to divide by 4 on both sides to get this radical to be square root of u, and then this term 2t plus 9t cubed dt will become du over 4. All right, let's also change the bounds. So if t equals 0, if t equals 0, then u equals 1. Just subbing that in up here. And if t equals 1, then u becomes, let's see, plug in 1. So 1 plus 4 plus 9 is 14. All right, so this is going to be the integral from 1 to 14 of square root of u and then du over 4 because we have to divide by this 4 since it doesn't appear in our integral anywhere. All right, so this is going to be 1 fourth and then integral of u to the 1 half is 2 thirds u to the 3 halves from 1 to 14. So that can reduce a little bit. Let's see if we can cancel this 2 and this 4. Put a 2 down there, so that's 1 over 6. This is going to be 1 over 6 times, uh, we'll say 14 to the 3 halves minus 1. And there's not really any more simplifications that I can do, so we'll just leave it like this. And that's our answer for part B. So this is our solution for part B. And that is the general procedure. Either we have to parameterize the curve ourselves, or we're given the parameterization, but really the key is to remember, is it a scalar function? Well, that's usually indicated right here by this ds. So is it a scalar function? There's a ds here. There may be a dx and a dy, but uh, most of the time you just see a little ds here. That means take the line integral over the curve C of the scalar function. And when you have the scalar function, you have to multiply by the magnitude of r prime. And r prime, or r is the vector function that has these components, x, y, and z. And that's our approach. That's how we do it.